Today's class is about how to calculate pH and hydrogen ion concentration. Uh, a, number of, uh, a number of different situations arise when uh, calculating pH. One is the calculation with strong acids. You get also separate uh, calculation for weak acids. And you get another for a combination of weak acids and strong acids. And also the same calculations are done um, analogously with bases. Strong bases, weak bases, and a mixture of weak, a weak base with a strong base. So the first example we're going to look at is how to calculate the pH of a strong acid solution. When a strong acid is dissolved in water, it dissociates 100%, yielding the same amount of uh, hydrogen ions as there was acid. So for example, what is the pH of a 0 0.03 molar solution of nitric acid? Nitric acid dissociates completely according to this equation to give you uh, the uh, protons and nitrate anion. So therefore the H plus concentration is going to also equal 0 0.03 molar. Plug that into the pH equation. pH equals negative log of H plus concentration. You get a pH of 1.52. Perhaps you might get a problem where they give you the mass of the acid, in which case you'd have to find how many moles of the acid are in the solution. That's what I did here. The question says, find the pH of a solution of perchloric acid with 5.05 grams of the acid dissolved in 3.5 liters of water. This is perchloric acid. So we find the molar mass of perchloric acid. Here's the height, mass of hydrogen, mass of the chlorine, four times the mass of oxygen. Gives you a molar mass of 100. There's 5.05 grams of perchloric acid. So you get 5.02 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of perchloric acid. Notice that I don't delete uh, any of the uh, of the decimal places so that I don't, I don't introduce uh, rounding error. Uh, then from the moles of perchloric acid, I want to find out what the concentration of perchloric acid is. I, we recall that uh, the number of moles is equal to the molarity times the volume, or if we rearrange the equation, the molarity is defined as the number of moles of solute over the volume of solution, where n equals number of moles, m equals the molarity, and v equals the volume in liters. So, uh, Plugging into this equation, here's the number of moles, here's the volume. We get this molarity, then we plug this uh, amount. Since the molarity equals the concentration of um, protons, then we can enter it into the pH equation to get the pH, and it turns out the pH is 1.84 under these conditions. In example number two, we're asked to calculate the pH of a weak acid. Weak acids do not ionize completely in aqueous solution, so instead they uh, partially dissociate, and their dissociation can be described using an equilibrium constant. We call it Ka for acids, Kd for bases. Uh, for a weak acid like acetic acid, you get the acetate ion forming and proton. So the equilibrium constant is again always defined in terms of product concentrations over reactant concentrations. For this particular acid, for acetic acid, the value of Ka happens to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So in aqueous solutions of acetic acid, the equilibrium constant will work out to this number when you write in all the concentrations in moles per liter. Each weak acid has a particular equilibrium constant, which allows predictions to be made about the pH of a solution containing a weak acid. In some cases, it's a, it's a good idea to write out an ice table. So what you do is you write out the equation of, of the dissociation, and you write the word or the letters I, C, E. I for initial concentration, C for the change, and E for the equilibrium concentration of whatever substance is dissociated. So a typical question, what is the concentration of protons and the pH that will result from a 0.85 molar concentration of acetic acid in water? We'll go to this board to see the solution to that question. The answer to the question, acetic acid is a weak acid with a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We've written out the equation that shows the dissociation of acetic acid into the acetate anion and the proton. The initial concentration of the acid is 0.85 molar. And at the outset, we can, we can say that there's zero acetate ion and zero protons. Once the acid begins to dissociate, an amount X of this will break down. An amount of X of the acetic acid will break down. So that at equilibrium, we're going to have 0.85 minus x concentration. Um, in the, the same proportion of this that breaks down will produce uh, acetate anions. So if it starts out at zero, it'll be plus x in opposition to minus x, because these are products, whereas these are reactants. And the equilibrium concentration will be x. 
same with the protons. So when we write the equilibrium equation, products over reactants, we'll be able to substitute all these quantities with x times x over 0.85 minus x. All of that has to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Now there are three ways to solve these equations. One is by approximation. The second method is by the quadratic formula. And the third way is by iteration. All three should give very similar answers, sometimes even identical answers. We'll, use, we'll start with the easiest one, the method of approximation. What you, what you would do in this um, technique is you would assume that x is very small. Because it's a weak acid, the amount of acetic acid that dissociates is going to be a tiny amount, tiny compared to 0.85. So we can assume that if we cross out the x, it's going to have little or no effect almost no effect on the, on the numerical value of x. And that is where x represents acetate and then the proton concentration. So we simplify the equation from um, 1.8 times, times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to x squared over 0.85 minus x to simply putting the denominator as 0.85. When we do the math, we get a value of x equal to 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And that corresponds to the proton concentration under these conditions. The, other, the, the second technique is probably the most accurate and, and can be the fastest depending on the numbers. Sometimes when you write numbers into the quadratic formula, it can be very cumbersome because the numbers are long and um, it's easy to make mistakes. If you forget a minus sign or something like that, you'll, you'll end up getting the wrong answer. But you would enter these numbers into the quadratic formula after developing the trinomial. So in number two, we, we use the quadratic formula. We write a trinomial. Uh, having expanded the bracket, and we enter all the numbers, and we get, again, x is equal to 3.90253318 times 10 to the minus 3, which is very close to what we got in the first approximation. The third method, the one I prefer, is the method of iteration, and it should give you an identical answer to what you get with the quadratic formula. The iteration method picks up where the approximation method leaves off. So you begin by doing the, uh, the same thing as you do with the approximation method, but the value of x that you obtain thereby is plugged back into the original equation. This is what we did here. So now, using technique number one, I got a value for x, which was 3.9115244. I plug that value of x into here, and it gives me a new value for the denominator. And when I calculate x squared, when I solve for x, I get x sub 2, which is 3.9025117 times 10 to the minus 3, according to my calculator. I then take this number, and I plug it back into the equation again. And I keep on repeating the, the, uh, the calculation until the number stops changing. It'll reach a point where the readout in my calculator is no longer able to detect the difference. So the number that we get asymptotically approaches the, the, cor the correct answer. It's like a, it converges on the correct answer. And you'll see that it ends up being identical to the number you get with the quadratic formula. So this is a technique that can actually be faster than entering all the numbers into the quadratic formula in certain instances, and can give you the, the assurance that you're on the right track when you use two different methods and you get the same answer. So especially if you're, an exam, you're in, the, in an exam, you might find yourself uh, hurried, and then rather than doing the whole quadratic formula all over again, you can try this technique when you get the exact same answer. Uh, you'll feel confident that you found the correct answer. So this is the iteration method. Uh, in, with the iteration method, again, when we revert to two significant figures, which are the maximum, which is the maximum allowed for this calculation, you see that you get 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, which is identical to all the other values that were obtained in the other two methods.